where are we now? Thursk in Yorkshire. Famous for horse racing. There's a thousand year old market. A very nice little church just along the road there. And of course, it's also the home of James Harriet, real name, Alf White. But if you come to Harriet country and you want to see old features great and small, you've got to come to the Ritz. It was built in 1912, and round about 1995, it was suggested they closed the Ritz. People weren't crackers. Consequently, they formed a committee, got volunteers, and now they managed to keep the place open. This cinema isn't run by a manager, and uh, it's certainly not run by one of the big entertainment consortiums, you know, part of a chain or something like that. It is run by a people's committee, and the chairman of that committee is John Potter. Now, John, first, well, first a personal question. Uh, can you remember the first time you saw a film in a cinema? Yes, I remember it vividly. It was at the, the Regent, the other cinema that's now a bingo hall, it's just down the street. And my mother and father took me there in 1953 to see the film of the coronation. And as soon as they turned the lights out, I screamed blue murder and they had to take me away. <laughs> so we missed the film completely. But what, what is the, the history then of, of the Ritz, of the cinema? I mean, how far does it go back? It was originally built as a mechanics institute. And then in 1912, it was changed into a cinema by Gosh. a gentleman called Walter Power. And it's been a cinema ever since. So it was silent then, obviously. Yes, it was, yes. Well, yes the we... original screen uh, is still behind our screen that we're using at the moment. Is it? Now, Frida, you're a councillor and a committee member. This seems to me a very unusual situation. At what stage did you realise that this cinema, a private business, might fold and the council step in to help things along? Well, there was a, a hiccup at the beginning of the summer when it looked as though it would fold. Someone else took it on, ran it for about three months, and then it did fold, and it actually came to an end. And people came to us and said, the council should do something. But there's only 11 of us on the council. There's no way we could run a cinema. And we said, if people want the cinema, then people will have to do something about it. And then we had a public meeting. And we said, did people want to help? Not, did they want to sit there and say the council should do something? Or even, somebody should do something, but will you do something? And people wrote their names on a piece of paper. And we gathered all these together. And some said they would sell ice creams in the kiosk. And some said they would do the electrical things. And some said they were handy with a spanner and eventually we got going and we started. Now, John, who chooses the films? Well, we have a little se selection committee. There's four of them. They meet once a month and they read all the magazines, uh, look through the uh, reviews on the films. They know our local audience. We've had three years of experience, so we do know roughly what is going to go well in Thursk, and they choose the films. And uh, the main committee abide by their choice. But do you find that there's a, a younger generation coming in who perhaps aren't like the slightly older generation who are movie fans? You know, we grew up with the cinema. We have some quite young volunteers. Uh, we've got quite a lot of people that come who are doing the Duke of Edinburgh's award scheme and they're doing it as part of their service to the community aspect of the uh, Duke of Edinburgh's and they come along and help uh, several nights a week. So mm. we've got all age groups of volunteers. Yeah. Most of the people who work at the Ritz still have day jobs, so that means that the volunteers probably put in a day's work, then have to go to the cinema and put in an evening's work. But it, it does mean that it's run by the people of Thursk for the people of Thursk. Isn't that right, Mo? You're all volunteers. You're, you're here tonight to work. Mm -hmm. But what do you do during the day? I work as a receptionist at a local brewery. Oh, good. I'll perhaps mm. see you later <laughs> on then. But what do you do? I work for Building Society. Building Society, gentleman at the back. School bus driver. School bus driver. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Mo, I know, I know what you do because you give out tickets, parking yeah. tickets in the, the square there. Yeah, really do you ever get people turning up yeah. to come into the cinema that <laughs> you've given them a ticket? Occasionally they'll recognise me on the other side of the glass and realise who I was, who I am, and what I was doing in there, yes. So you give them yeah. another ticket? Yes. <laughs> what, what about you? I work in a warehouse and I'm showing the film tonight. Oh, yeah? Yes. What is the film tonight? The Siege. Oh, good. Well, I should look forward to seeing it. So you 
want this cut in reverse then? In reverse. Oh, so. A 10 millimeter, out, 10 millimeter outline letter. Right. Yeah, excuse, excuse me, I'm sorry, what, what do you, it's not a poster, is it? It's, no. It is the, the way it's backwards up. So there's it? That's right. You notice on the window up there. Oh, yeah. It's getting a bit tatty. As you see, it's starting to peel off. And, uh, How long has that been up there then, do you think? Since the cinema opened, I should think. I guess so. Know? It's well over 50 years, I would guess. Mm. So. Mm. As long as you're not going to try and make it too modern. I'd, no, no, that, that it's going to be so exactly long. the same. No, it's good. What's your day job? I'm sales manager for a, a local company, the specialist printers. who make labels, nameplates, signs, etc. Why did you get involved in the Ritz? Well, I, th I think it's a really good idea, I mean, to keep an old cinema like this open. You know, there aren't many left. And it's a sort of cinema that a lot of us remember from when we were kids, you know. Why do you do that? Because you seem to be busy enough as it is, without taking on the cinema as well. Um, I just enjoy meeting people. I obviously know a lot of people in Thirst through the various jobs that I do, and uh, it's nice to see people enjoying themselves. And a lot of people are grateful that we do this, and it's nice to see them going out and being happy. Are well, you a cinema fan anyway? Yeah, I like the films, yes. Not that you get a chance to see them when you're on duty. You have to come another night. <laughs> Can I just say a ticket, please, sir? Yeah, I'll okay. get a Oh, multi-coloured. Cheers. Cheers. Where do the ice creams come from? Uh, just before the film starts, normally, sir. Good. Vanilla? Certainly, yeah. If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where Harlem is? Putting on the rim. Come with me and we'll attend their jubilee and see them spend their last two minutes. Putting on the red. Do you often come, though, as we come punters? Once, we come once a week, week yeah. and we pay. Do like, you? Yes. Yeah. Whatever's on? Whatever's on. Virtually. Virtually. Well, There's yeah, one virtually. or two. Yeah. One or two that we've we've missed, but I mean, we will come and see everything because I'm, I'm going to feel partly responsible for yeah, it. Yeah, we chose them. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah I suppose so. If you can't see through them, who can? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> And even if you come down the back alleys in the middle of the night, practically in Thursk, there's a connection with the cinema. I'll give the secret knock. Put something over your ears, because you don't want to hear this. Hello, John. Hello, Graham. Hi. Now, look, you see, your projectionist here, presumably you must get paid. No, I don't. No, it's uh, totally voluntary. Well, why do you offer to give nights of the week projecting this, these films? I find it relaxing from a normal day job. What is your normal day job? I'm a computer engineer running around the North East like mad. Well, I hope I'm not keeping you for you, but could I do it? A bit of training I think you'd manage. Oh, well, let's go in and do it. Thirsk, famous for its horse racing, of course, and there's a thousand-year-old market and very nice little church. And, of course, it's the home of... James Herriot, whose real name is Alf White. But it's also got a nice little cinema, and the people of Thursk have decided to use it rather than lose it. <laughs> 